What we're going to be going over here are stock warrants that are issued with other securities and for example here we're going to have a stock warrant issued with a bond and we're going to be using the proportional method to allocate the bond and the warrant proceeds. For example here Corporation A issued 4,000 bonds with detachable warrants here at a thousand dollar par value per bond and they were issued at 101 or 101 percent of par and each bond was issued with one detachable stock warrant. So point one here after issuing the bonds they were selling separately here at 98 percent of their par and that's without the warrant here and the warrants had a market value here of forty dollars each so the bonds and the warrants each could be sold separately here and we're going to be using the proportional method here to issue the bond with the warrant here and we're using the proportional method here because we know what they could be sold separately at each security here we know that the bond could be sold here at 98 percent or 100 980 dollars per bond and a warrant could be sold separately here at $40 per warrant and um, okay so now let's go out and let's look at let's look at our example here so for the detachable warrant that can be separated from the security in this case it's the bond and it, be, it can be traded sep as a separate security here and by purchasing a warrant the buyer receives the right to buy some stock equity in the company here at a fixed price in the future so what we have to do is we have to allocate the proceeds here from the sales of the bonds or the debt here with the attached warrant and we have to allocate between the two securities here and we're going to be using that proportional method here. Okay so let's go up and look at our example here. So for the proportional method, well we use the proportional method here because we know the fair value of all the securities here. The fair value is known here, that is they know the value here when they're sold separately. And uh, knowing that here you can allocate the proceeds received proportionately here between the securities. So let's look at our example here and our allocation will start out here where it's based on the fair value of one unit. And what we're talking about one unit, that would be one bond here and that one one detachable stock warrant here that's attached to it. So for this is where we have to look at the bond and the warrant sold separately and we have to base this here on their separate selling price. So for a bond here we know that it was selling separately here at 98 percent of a thousand dollar par value so one bond would be worth nine hundred eighty dollars. Okay so one warrant here well we were given that value here at forty dollars market price per warrant and there was one warrant attached to the bond here. So the warrant value would be $40 here. So total bond value of $980 plus the $40 value of the warrant gives us a total fair value of one unit here of $1,020. So the fractional amount that we go to the bond is simply $980 a dollars here divided by the total fair value of a thousand twenty that gives us ninety six point one percent allocated to the bond and then the warrant would be a the fractional amount here forty dollars divided by the total value here of a thousand twenty that would be three point nine percent so we've allocated here uh, total hundred percent here ninety six point one percent goes to the bond and three point nine percent here goes to the warrant and that's based here on those separate selling price. We had to know what each of them was selling separately here and this is where that proportional method comes into play here. Okay so now let's look the next thing we have to do is we have to allocate the receipts between the bond and the warrant. So our total cash receipts here or sale receipts here we had those 4,000 units here a thousand dollar par value here per bond uh, uh, per bond here at 101 percent. So it's selling at 101 percent here with the bond and one detachable warrant here. So multiplying those out 4,000 times 1,000 par here at 101 percent you're going to get total sales receipts here of four million forty thousand dollars. Okay now allocating these sales receipts here between our bond and our warrant. So allocating to our bond here that's that fractional amount that we had up here that 96.1 percent or 980 divided by the total fair value of this, that unit here of 1,020 times our total sales receipt here of four million uh, forty thousand dollars gives us an allocation to our bond here at three million eight hundred eighty two thousand and then uh, allocating to our warrant we just use that fractional amount that we uh, calculated up here times the total sales receipts here uh, 
so we come up with 158,000 here allocated to our warrant. Uh, fractional amount 40 divided by 1,020, the total fair value of that unit here, times the total sales receipts here, $4.4 4 million, $4 million for $158,000. So now the next thing is we have to deal with any discount or premium on our bond. And in this case, uh, the bond, we're going to have a discount here. So that's where it's going to be this allocated discount here. So our allocated to the bond here, we have that at $3,882,000. And the bond's par value, well, we have 4,000 bonds here at a $1,000 par value. So um, we have $4 million here in its par value. So comparing the par here to the allocated amount here of $3,882,000, we're going to have a discount here of $118,000 since uh, it's a discount here because the bonds we're selling or allocated amount here was less than the total par value. Okay, so the next thing is let's go and look at how we'd record this here. So we have those 4,000 bonds here issued at 101% with one detachable stock warrant per bond. Okay, so what we're going to have here, we're going to have our cash account here and then we're going to have our bonds payable and because we've got a discount on our bonds we have this contra uh, liability account that we have to set up for the discount and then we're going to have the paid in capital here for our warrants. So starting with our cash receipts here. So what we would have had, that's one, the bond here plus that one warrant and that was 4,000 units here times um, that 101% issued price here for $1,010 per unit. So that gives us a debit or an increase of our cash here of $4,040,000. So that's the cash we received on the sale. So the next thing we have to allocate here. So for a bond, well, we've got our par value, 4,000 uh, bonds here at $100,000 par value per bond. So we credit our bonds payable, our liability for $4 million. And then because they were sold at a discount here, which is a contra liability or a contra account or a bonds payable, we have to record that here. So we would debit or increase our bond discount here at $118,000. And that, again, was based on our calculation here. The bonds par amount here was $4 million. And then that allocated amount here that we allocated at $3,882,000. So the difference gave us the discount here of $118,000. Okay, so debit, bonds, discount, contra account here at $118,000. And then, and remember, this is a debt liability here on our and our, on, our, on, on the liability side of our ec shareholders' equity and liability side of the equation here. And then we have our, we have to allocate that warrant value. And that, remember, we allocated at $158,000. So that would go to a paid-in capital account here uh, under stock warrants here. Again, on our balance sheet, so we'd credit that here for uh, the allocated amount here at 158000 Again, the warrant here is part of our stockholders' equity here. So if we look at our debits and credits here, starting with our debits and our cash, we have $4,040,000 here. And then we would have had a debit here to our bond discount amount, $118,000 here. And totaling those up here, they would balance with our credits here and our bonds payable of $4 million here. And then with the warrant value here that we had to a paid in capital equity account here of $158,000. Okay, so we've taken care of the case here where we uh, allocated based on using the proportional method here. And the reason we use the proportional method here is that we knew what um, each of the um, values here are what we knew what they separate what would each of the, what the bond would sell separately at and what the warrant would be selling separately at when it's detachable here so that's the case here where we use the proportional method so this is how how we made our recording here at the issuance here of this bond with the detachable stock warrant okay so that sums it up